Imagine this, you're at work and a sudden shift in company policy turns your world upside down. How do you adapt? This is a question many of us grapple with in our professional lives. Change is inevitable and in the workplace it can come in many forms. New leadership, shifting roles, or even a complete overhaul of company culture. But here's a thought. What if we told you that change isn't always a bad thing? Yes, it can be challenging, even intimidating, but it also opens up opportunities for growth and innovation. Often we view change through a lens of fear, seeing it as a disruption rather than an opportunity. But let's flip the script. Instead of fearing change, let's embrace it. Let's see it as a chance to learn, to improve, to innovate. Adapting to change isn't just about survival, it's about thriving in a constantly evolving environment. Now, let's dive into the heart of the matter. The most commonly used tool for adapting to significant changes at work, the change curve. The change curve is a psychological model that paints a vivid picture of our typical emotional response to change. It's like a roadmap of the human psyche during times of transition. This powerful tool originated from the work of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who initially used it to understand the process of grieving. However, it was soon discovered that this model could also be applied to any significant life change, including changes in the workplace. The change curve consists of four stages, denial, resistance, exploration, and commitment. Let's break down these stages for a moment. First, we have denial. This is the stage where the news of change has just hit and we're having a hard time accepting it. It's a natural response. We're creatures of habit, after all. During this stage, we might find ourselves questioning the need for change or even pretending it's not happening. Next comes resistance. This is when reality sets in and we start to resist the change. We might feel frustrated, anxious, or even angry. It's during this stage that our productivity might take a hit. Then we enter the exploration phase. This is when we begin to accept the change and start exploring new ways of doing things. It's a time of learning, growth, and creativity. However, it can also be a time of confusion as we're navigating uncharted waters. Finally, we reach the stage of commitment. This is when we fully embrace the change and are committed to making it work. We've learned new ways of doing things and are now more adept at handling change. Understanding the change curve allows you to anticipate your reactions and navigate through them more effectively. It's not a magic wand that'll make change easy, but it's a secret weapon that can help you understand your emotions, manage them better, and ultimately, adapt more effectively to the inevitable changes that life throws your way at work. You may be thinking, that's great, but how do I actually use the change curve? Let's break it down. Imagine you're in a meeting and your boss announces a new company-wide software change. Your initial reaction might be shock or denial, the first stage of the change curve. Recognize this and remind yourself that it's a normal reaction to change. Next, you might feel frustration or resistance, the second stage. Here, it's crucial to seek out support, ask questions, and learn as much as you can about the new software. Gradually, you'll move into exploration, the third stage, where you start to see the potential benefits of the change. Finally, you reach acceptance and commitment, the last stage, where you fully embrace the new software and use it effectively. Applying the change curve in your daily life can make a significant difference in how you handle change at work. We've shared our insights, now we want to hear from you. How have you handled significant changes in your workplace? Changes can be challenging, but they often open doors to new opportunities and learning experiences. Maybe you've navigated an office relocation, or perhaps you've had to adapt to a new management style or technology. Each of these experiences is unique and can teach us something valuable about resilience and adaptability. Perhaps you found a strategy that worked wonders for you, or you stumbled upon a pitfall that others could learn from. Your experiences are not just personal victories or mishaps, they are shared wisdom. And in sharing, we create a space for learning and growth, a community that supports each other through the winds of change. Remember, adapting to change is a skill, and like any skill, it can be improved with practice and patience. So keep learning, keep growing, and most importantly, keep adapting.